just still away somewhere to pray. How glad we are to see everyone present in this house of prayer today. We pray that the Lord will answer all our prayers. Amen. It's a good place to be. Yes. Let's blend our voices to sing together from our sacred songs and solos. We begin with hymn number 312. Hymn number 312. Once more, O oh Lord, we pray. You're welcome to the Apostolic Faith Church, Bexley Branch. For our internet audience, we pray that the Lord will bless you wherever you are. Amen. We are located on number 13, Penn Hill Road, DA53EP, Echo Papa, as they say. If you live locally or you're visiting and you like to be physically present, you are very welcome to join us. You have only missed out on the um, prelude that we had, violin solo, and then Jesus forgives and forgets from the choir before the um, last duet. I just still away somewhere and pray. If you cannot join us, we pray that the Lord will bless you wherever you are. Amen. You can sing along with us and just continue to enjoy the service. You know God is everywhere. Yeah. He will certainly bless you. Amen. Three, one, two will be our first song that we're going to blend our voices to sing together about. It's all about prayer today. We want to build on the lessons that we've had last week and this week so that we put everything we've had into practice. We don't want it to make a theory. God answers prayers. Yes. He will answer your prayers today. Amen. He will answer mine to today. So let's put our hearts on the songs that we're going to be um, singing together. We take this one, just all the three verses, after the introduction from the keyboard players. Orchestra will join us as we just have the keyboard players to introduce us into the song, and we take all the three verses again, sitting down. Pray on, pray on, believing one. God will answer prayer. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
Amen. The Lord will answer prayer. Amen. We want to sing He will answer every Amen. prayer. Amen. It's going to be every prayer today Amen. that the Lord will answer, Amen. including that of our children, that of our visitors, that of our regular members, that of our pastor, that of our ministers, that of everyone. He will answer every prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. We sing again this common song with the choir, but which all of us would want to sing together now um, with the tune from the orchestra, and then we join them in the singing. We're taking all the four verses. believe that? Yes. Satan empire is in trouble. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to pray to God today and he will answer. Amen. Let's take one more song before we have congregational prayer and that is from our hymn book SSNS 332. We're going to take verses 1, 2, 5, and 6. 1, 2, Five and six. And for those who can manage to stand up, we're going to sing those four verses standing, one, two, five, and six, at the end of which we're going to have the congregational prayer to be brought by Brother Upe. Um, three, three, two, verses one, two, five, and six, standing up, and then we have congregational prayer. Let's use tune.
Pray, always pray. The Holy Spirit pleads within thee all thy daily, hourly needs. Pray, always pray. Though weary, faint, and lone, pray, always pray. Amid the world's turmoil, pray, always pray. If joys thy pathway throng, pray, always pray. If loved ones pass the veil, this is one, two, five, and six. We're going to stand up to sing, and then we have congregational prayer. <laughs> Father, we thank you. Amen. The God of yesterday, you are the God of today. Yes. We pray to you because our prayers in the past you have answered. Yes. We thank you for the breath of life. Yes. We thank you for the healings you have given to us. Yes. We thank you for our children. Yes. We thank you for our spouses. Yes. We thank you for everybody in our family. Yes. We thank you most of all for Sunday. A day that we can come to, to say good morning, Father. Yeah. The day that we come to say thank you, Jesus. The day that we can spend in your house rewardingly. The day that we can greet you with smile. Oh, Lord, we glorify your name. Lord Jesus, we have come again. We know you have answered in the ancient days. The ones we are going to pray today that you are going to answer. Oh, Lord, the most important sin. The most important thing is that you help us to pray through to salvation. Yeah. It is important that we are sanctified. It is also important that we receive the Holy Ghost baptism. Yeah. Oh Lord, as many as may be standing here today, without these experiences, oh Lord, that you open their understanding yeah. and that you will let your spirit rule over yeah. us. Come and bless us today, Father. Yeah. You will send your word and your word will heal us. Yeah. Oh Lord, anoint your servants yeah. as your word will come out this morning. Yeah. Let it be to the needs of our soul. Yeah. Bless us to make heaven yeah. in the name of God the Father yeah. and of the Son yeah. and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Okay, we listen now to the first uh, special, A Clean Heart. Um, and then at the end of that, we have the Bible reading taken from the book of Genesis, the fourth chapter, reading the first five verses. And at the end of that, we have the last special which is weary wonder um, which is a quartet and then we have the word of exhortation centered on prayer may the lord answer our prayers today Amen.
Station. The more way and such the sprint of guilty doubt. Let's watch and struggle as I may. Fear I am not. Fear. Bible reading for this service is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4 and we'll be reading from verse 1 to verse 5. Genesis chapter 4, we're reading from verse 1 to verse 5. Genesis 4, 1. And Adam knew Eve his wife. And she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Two, and she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Three, and in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Five. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wrought, and his countenance fell.
continue from the passage that we read together. We finished at the fifth verse, Genesis chapter 4. We have read verses 1 to 5. I want to continue from there. I just want to read verse 6 and part of verse 7. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou loved? And why is thy countenance falling? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. I am excited this morning. I think the uh, ministers and workers may feel that, even right from the prayer room, when I raised them up before we came out. And I said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. What do we do in the house of the Lord? We pray to our Heavenly Father. We receive blessings from our Heavenly Father. And that is what we are to do today. That is what we are here for today. God will answer your prayers. Amen. God will bless you today. We are not here in vain. We are here for a purpose. Yes. And may God help us to realize that each time God gives us the opportunity to be present in his house, we are there for the purpose to receive from God, yes. to hear from God, yes. to be blessed by God. Yes. Perhaps no wonder that for the last two weeks we have been studying about prayer. Prayer is very important. Yes. Prayer is what you need, is what I need. Yeah. And that is what we do little of. We talk more. You just think about it. At the end of this word of exhortation, or maybe you can think back, how many minutes have you spent on your knees talking to God as compared to when you get up? and you meet your friends outside. There's nothing wrong in talking to friends. Don't misunderstand me. But just to let you know that there are forces fighting against our praying through. Yeah. But Jesus Christ knew that very well, and no wonder he decided in this uh, um, scripture that we have studied together, Luke chapter 18, from verse 1 through to 14, give us some injunctions about prayer, but pointing mainly to two important factors in prayer. Persistence and attitude. Persistence factor and attitude factor. So it is my mind today that as we come together, we look into these two um, factors, and then we go on our knees to pray with positive attitude, Amen. with the right attitude, Amen. so that we can be blessed. Think about it. When we talk about these two people that came to pray, remember, two of them came to the temple. Did you notice that? They were not praying outside. Just as you have come into the temple, just as I have come into the temple, the two of them came into the temple to pray. And they prayed two different prayers. And they got two different results. I heard the teacher. When he said, which one do you want to be? And that is a very good question. 
But it is my prayer that today, Amen. this particular day, Amen. before this great camp meeting, this international camp meeting, we start in Portland, Oregon. This day, Amen. you and I, Amen. we have a testimony, Amen. just like the publican had, he left justified. Amen. He left the temple blessed. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you and I, we are not going to leave this temple Amen. like the Pharisee. Amen. We are going to live like the publican. Amen. Because we are going to pray, not just pray, but with right attitude. Amen. And the Lord will answer our prayer. Amen. That first parable looked at persistence. Never give up. Keep asking until you receive. The second one says that even when you are persisting, keep up the right attitude. Yeah. You can be on your knees for 10 days, for 20 days. If your attitudes are wrong, you will not receive anything from God. The two go together. Yes. Persistence and the right attitude. May God teach you, may God teach me the right attitude Amen. to pray. Amen. We want to pray. We don't want to faint. We don't want to lose heart. We don't want to grow weary. We don't want to be tired. We don't want to give up. May God give us love. And spirit of prayer. Jesus gave these parables to encourage you and myself so that we will pray a prevailing prayer. We will pray the prayer that we touch heaven. We will pray the prayer that God will say, you are, you are moving my hands. And I will move my hands in your behalf. And the Lord will surely do that for us. May he give us the right attitude. It must have been something very important. And Jesus must have thought about it to even give two separate parables illustrating the same thing. Do you notice that? In the Bible, in this chapter that we have all studied together today in chapter 18, just to teach on importunity, in Luke chapter 11, he used the parable of the persistent friend to make the same point. Then there must be something special about persisting about importunity, just staying and be asking until our joy is full. Jesus wants you and I to know that we need to keep praying until God answers. Yes. And that is not vain repetition. Keep asking God for what God has not done, and you know the Lord has promised, is not vain repetition. Don't let the enemy tell you that you've been asking God, save my soul, save my soul. Keep telling him, save your soul. If you know you are not saved, if you know you are not sanctified, keep telling him, I want you to sanctify me. I prayed, 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 prayed yesterday. I'm praying it today again. That is not vain repetition. God will answer our prayers. Amen. God is going to do something for me. Amen. Today, Amen. I knew that right from the prayer room. Amen. And I know it's going to do for all of you too. Amen. And for those of you that are listening to me on this webcast, the Lord will visit you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. He will visit us here too, Amen. and he will answer our prayer. Amen. Before prayers are answered, prayers have to be prayed. Yeah. Do you realize that? Yeah. We must pray. Yeah. And some people may be thinking that I've been praying. I've been praying. Yes, you've been praying. God knows you have been praying. God is hearing your prayer. Yeah. God is going to answer your prayer. Amen. If the answers have not come, be sure they will surely come. Amen. At God's own time. Yeah. And for a good cause. That's why perhaps some of us have not received answers. doesn't matter. That's why Jesus Christ wants to say, I want to encourage my children. I want to encourage my disciples. You know a time will come in your life when you will pray and then you may want to give up. Then Jesus is saying, never give up. Amen. Never give up. Amen. Keep praying. Keep telling me. My Father will answer your prayer. Amen. Therefore, today, let it be settled in your mind. Young people, children, adults, workers, non-workers, let it be settled in our hearts today. That Satan likes it or not, we are going to pray to God today. Amen. And God is going to make today a different day. Amen. A day that he will answer prayer. Our God is a God of encouragement. Yes. I leave testimony to people to give. Many times you don't want to just shout out. 
just in between the Sunday school and this service. A long-standing problem, a long-standing issue. The couple just came into my office. The Lord has done it. Amen. God answers prayers. Amen. Don't let the devil deceive you. If it's taking long, stick to God. Amen. Keep to God. Amen. Keep asking. Amen. He will answer. Amen. He will answer my prayer. Amen. He will answer your prayers. Amen. Those of you on the webcast, the Lord will answer your prayers. Amen. And you will give testimony. Yes. God is still in the business. Yes. He doesn't sleep. The problem you and I have is that we don't pray. And when even some of us pray, we pray with the wrong attitude. But through these two lessons, Jesus wants to put us back on track and shame the devil and take the glory. And then we get the blessing in the name of Jesus. He knows that the devil is always around to discourage, to distract, to stop us, even for us to offer excuses. Have you not, has it not happened to you? It has happened to me many times. You give some plausible excuses for not praying. Things that people will hear and they will give you pat on the back. Oh, yes, that, that's true. Yeah, 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 that happened. This and that. See, God, Jesus knows that. And he wants to encourage us that I know what Satan is doing. You may not know. But I want to encourage you that you need to pray until God will answer your prayer. This widow, this widow and the persistent friend, they won't give up. So we are not going to give up. Amen. I am not going, going to give up Amen. on the things that I'm asking God. And I know that this is will. The problem, again, of attitude. Many things we think it is the will of God. And perhaps it's not his will. Maybe many times it's good to even say, God, is this your will for me? Right. Some people may be saying that, well, it's marriage. They may now say this. But again, even before I got married, I can still say it, and I still tell young people, and that is what I, I was taught, and I believe in it, that even before you get married, you know the, the first uh, question, the first prayer you pray when you want to marry or the, 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 the getting to the time you, you feel you need to marry, you know the first qu uh, prayer you pray is not God, show me. What am I going to marry? The first prayer is, is it your will for me? Is it your will for me? That is what we are taught. Is it your will for me? And then when God says, yes, it is my will, stage one, move to stage two. Now that you have said it's your will, now show me. Now direct me. Now lead me. Who should I marry? We must always take everything to the Lord in prayer and say, what is your will? Even when it is so clear, so glaring. Some people will say you don't need to pray about that. We should pray about everything. Yes. Let's take everything to the Lord in prayer. Amen. We must pray in the morning, pray in the evening, pray at noon time, come to church to pray, pray alone, pray when it is um, time of Bible study, pray when it is prayer meeting time on Friday, pray when women's prayers are called, pray when men's prayers are called. Keep praying. Amen. Don't be tired. Amen. God is noting everything. Some people, they will spend hours to get to church for just one hour prayer. You think God is not watching you? You think God is not noting that down? But then the enemy will tell you it's just one hour, and you are going to travel two hours to, two hours through, just for one hour prayer. That's from the devil. Give it what it takes. Have the right attitude. They say we should come for prayer, and the word of God enjoins it, Yes, I pray at home, and now this is a public prayer that the word of God supports, and it has been called. It may be difficult. I will be there. Yeah. God, help me to be there. Yeah. That is the right attitude. Yeah. Right from that time, you are forming such attitude and that kind of um, behavioral manifestation within yourself. God sees it. God knows it. And your blessing starts right there. Yeah. You may not see it then, but your blessing and your answer start from there. Yeah. And God is going to hear us. God will answer our prayer. Yeah. Our God is not asleep. He doesn't travel. I'm going to be away during the course of this week now. Perhaps some people may want to have a chat with the pastor on one thing or the other. The pastor is not around. God doesn't do that. It's always there. Always there. Everywhere, anywhere. What excuse do I have then? What excuse do you have? He's never tired. 
And that's part of what Jesus Christ was telling us, that Jesus, God will not say, I'm tired of you. Why are you coming every time? If an unjust judge and this uh, a friend of this persistent friend just keep knocking, I have some visitors, I need some bread, and I know you have bread. Keep knocking. Just keep knocking. I have some visitors, I have nothing to give them, and I know you have. If those people will say things like, I'm, well, this, let me just quickly give him and let him go, let me rest. How much more this great God of heaven, who is actually desiring our prayers. You don't want somebody to come and knock at your door very late at night. That's not something I desire. That's not one, something I want, even though it is to help. But as far as God is concerned, he doesn't sleep. He does not grow weary. He will answer our prayers. Amen. When we come before God, the problem many of us have is this attitudinal factor. Let's not approach God like the Pharisee. Some people come into the house of God, you know, just as these people came. One prayed to God. Did you notice that? One prayed to himself. You know that can happen today? Some of these we have touched during our Sunday school. When you want to tell God how good, how wonderful, how fantastic, how obedient, how deserving you are. Who do you think you are? What is that thing that you are doing that you think you are the one doing it, if not God, in you? But that's the attitude some people have. You come into the house of God, you should come, and I love the way we all contributed on the question of humility. And as I was listening, I was asking myself, that perhaps we need to consider what is even the meaning of humility. You know, there's something called subtle pride. Nobody will say that I'm not, I don't think, maybe some people will say that, that I'm not humble, I'm, I'm a proud person. People won't confess that. But there's something called subtle pride. There's something like um, I, I am there. Uh, don't you see me? Who are you? Who am I? We are nothing. Until we come before God and we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Who am I? I am nothing. I have nothing. I come to you to plead. I come to you to beg. I come to pray to you. Not to come and tell you what I've achieved, what I've done. Right attitude. May God give us the right attitude. Amen. We don't want to come before God, justifying ourselves in self-righteousness. We may pray all the day, as I said, but when the attitude is negative, the end result of such prayer may be likened to that description that is found uh, in the book of Lamentation by uh, Prophet Jeremiah, when he said that, Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud, that our prayer should not pass, pass through. Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud that our prayers will not pass through. Where there is pride, God covers himself. Where there is attitude of, here I am, don't you see me? The cloud gather around God. And that prayer cannot pass through. But where there is the right attitude, this, uh, the choir members sing a song, pray the cloud away. You pray with the right attitude, the cloud will move. Amen. You will see God. Amen. God will see you. Amen. You will get answers to your prayers. Amen. Cain and Abel, in the passage we have read, you know they prayed. They came with sacrifices. The two of them knew about sacrifices. Just like the Pharisee and the uh, uh, publican, they knew that they needed to come to the temple, and they came. So also, Cain and Abel, they came to pray. But the Bible tells us that one was accepted and one was rejected. What was the problem? It's down to attitude problem. It's more of attitude problem in my understanding. If you look at it very carefully, first of all, 
it was said that Cain brought sacrifice to God from his um, occupation as a farmer. And then he brought something from his occupation, uh, fruit of the ground, the Bible says. Fruit of the ground. But if you compare that, wait a second, with Abel, the Bible gave a description. Firstling of his herd. There is something there. Abel did it carefully. Abel did it thoughtfully. Abel did it with what will God accept? God will not just accept anything. Just anything goes. The leftovers or whatever I can just quickly put together. God sees that when we do that. So he just, um, Cain um, brought something um, that is the fruit of the ground, anything would do. And Abel brought firstlings of his flock. He was careful, thoughtful, and same with us. Well, honestly, these two people brought from what they have. I know some people have said that he didn't bring uh, blood as a sacrifice because um, Abel brought um, 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 animal uh, for sacrifice and he didn't. Uh, that may be a different story, honestly, altogether, because in the Bible we will see later on, eventually, when God actually asked for um, things to be brought to him from the fruits of the ground. Okay? So that, 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 that is something else. But God knew their hearts. God knew their occupation. And God never even referred to the thing they brought. God was talking about their attitude in what they brought. If you look at it very well. What did God say? You have not done well. Cain, you have failed to live up to my expectation. Cain, whatever that expectation might have been, you have failed. And if we fail to meet God's expectation, and our prayer is not to say, God, what is your expectation? Help me to meet it. We put that aside, then we started praying. We started praying. That's not the right attitude. The right attitude is, what do you expect of me? I want to meet that expectation. And when I've met that expectation, then I know you will help me. If we pray in disobedience, such an attitude will not get prayer through. In disobedience. And that disobedience encompasses so many things. Be at home, be in the church, be in the workplace, be in the school, anywhere there is disobedience, and you just want to fall on your knees and be praying, and be praying. That's a wrong attitude. God will say to you, you have not done well. I'm not going to answer your prayer. Because if ye do well, I love that. God was trying to offer. If you do well, will you not be accepted? May God help you and I to do well. Amen. When we do well, our prayers will be accepted Amen. by God. Let us ask God, what do you mean by doing well? He will let you know. He will explain it to you. This means that Cain's offering will, not, will have been accepted if he had done what God expects. If you and I have done God's expectation, God will answer our prayer. The determining element here is the attitude. It is the attitude. Let's come before God with the right attitude. Not with the attitude of, um, I, I, I think I love that contribution that someone made about, uh, you know, you have done, you have paid your tithe, you have uh, paid your offering. Uh, when they call, um, work in the church, you are always there. Um, when they do this, you are always there. When they do that, you are always there. May God give us understanding. When we do any of those things, may we remember that it's God in us that is doing it. It's not me doing anything. It's not you doing anything. It's God that is doing it. That verse of the scripture says that after you have done everything, see yourself as unprofitable. You're only a servant that God is working and doing something through. We don't want things like that to get into our head. God just sees feet. He could have used any other person. You are not better. 
If something is telling you that it's because you are, you are more prayerful, you are super Christian, you are nothing. I am nothing. Let's rely on the righteousness of God. Let's see ourselves down there and God alone up there. That's why we tell God every time, it's not about me. It's all about you. If everything is about God, God's name will be glorified. He will answer our prayers. And the blessing will be ours. In Jesus' name. When we talk about this man, Cain, when God was telling him about the condition of his heart, you know, verse 8 tells us exactly what was in the heart. Before then, maybe you and I may not see that very well, but God saw that right from the beginning. Verse 8 says, And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And he was praying. He was bringing sacrifice. But then deep in his heart, a murderer. What an attitude. And you expect God to say that God sees our heart. Yes. I love some, the contributions we made this morning are just wonderful. And I pray God will help us not to forget that God sees the heart. Yes. Let's leave people to God. Leave people to God. God who sees the heart. Especially when it comes to prayer. God sees the heart more than what we see. We just see ourselves, oh, he was at the altar, pray, 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 and he was just a gentle, he was this and that. God doesn't see the way we see. God saw Cain. Anybody can be saying, ah, the two of them offered. What is the problem? That's what he had that he offered. But God is the one determining what is acceptable here. Yeah. He's not the pastor. He's not the minister. He's not the leader. He proved who he really was. Another positive attitude was found among the Ninevites. Do you remember when they heard the uh, sermon of Jonah? What did they do? The Ninevites, they believed God. May you believe God. Amen. They believe God. They proclaim a fast. May you fast when it is necessary to fast. Amen. They put on sackcloth, sat in ashes. They cried mightily. They turned from evil and their violence. They repented. Every one of them. From the king. Even to the animal. What an attitude. When God is talking to you. When God is speaking to me. What attitude do we have? And God can speak to us through any means. God spoke to these people. And they decided. No, 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 no. We are going to do something. And they put on that attitude. And verse 10. Of the book of Jonah. Chapter 3 says something that some people still struggle with. When the word of God says that God repented, it is in the Bible. And that simply means God changed his mind. Yes. Can God change his mind oh, yes. about your situation that is like as if he's finished, done and dusted and hopeless? God changes his mind. Amen. And he can change his mind on that situation that you are battling with the one that I'm battling with, if we will do like the Ninevites, with the right attitude in our prayer, his promises are sure. They are yea. They are amen. We must pray to claim them. Today we want to tarry on our knees. We want to confess our sins to God. God will forgive you your sins. We want to ask for salvation. God will save your soul. We want to ask for sanctification. God will sanctify you. Amen. You want Holy Ghost baptism. You can say that I've been praying. I have been praying today. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you will pray your way through. Amen. Some of us are sick. Today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because he's the one that said we should pray to him. And we just want to tell him, I don't even know how to pray. But you say we should pray to you. Therefore, Lord, I have come to pray to you. We want to come before him, tell him, I need deliverance. I need peace. I need solutions. We want to come reverently. 
and again, another good attitude in our church, in our organization that many people can point to, when altar call is given, it's a positive attitude. Go to the altar. We, we may look at them, the ordinary benches, the ordinary wood, yes, they are, but the instruction, the right attitude, when altar call is made, you have some people, when last did you even go to the altar? Yeah. I appreciate, because we don't have uh, many um, altar benches here. Immediately, immediately, this place is filled, that place is filled. That, that, that's understandable. And we know God is here. But even during the time when we don't have that, you don't love to go to the altar? It's not the right attitude. Go, take advantage of going to the altar. They say we should come to the altar, to this place, and call upon God. We, our altar, if you remember in the Bible, the altar is a special place. It's a consecrated place. It's a place that some people don't even know what it means. But we have the privilege. We have the opportunity of knowing the meaning of altar. Where we lay all. And we say, God, please take me. Have mercy upon me. We heard about that. Humble ourselves. Humble ourselves. Let's tell God, you know, what you will do to humble me. Humble me, O oh Lord. You say, if we seek your face, if we turn from our wicked ways, don't hide. Tell God, I am wicked. I am wicked. I am sinful. People may see me, brother, pastor, minister, teacher, choir, leader, whatever. I know myself, God. And I know you know me. I know what I'm battling with. But I know you can deliver me. I know you can set me free. I know you can have mercy upon my soul. Confess and turn away from these wicked ways. Then the promise came. Then God said, I will hear from heaven where I dwell. I will speak peace from there. I will open my eyes. I will open my ears. And my ears and my eyes, they will be attentive to your cries, to what you want to pray about. How are you going to leave the church today? Are you going to live like the Pharisee? Or you are going to live like the publican? The choice is yours. But I'm inviting you to come to the altar and call upon God and open your heart to him and tell him, tell him just as you are, who you are. He knows you already. Open your heart to him and let him know, Lord, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Deliver me today. Hear my prayers. You will hear your prayer. You will leave this temple. You will leave this assembly just as the public and left with justification, with blessing, with answers to his prayer. May the Lord bless you as you pray and as we sing our closing song.
Lord, we thank you for your promise that if your people whom are called by your name shall humble themselves and pray, you will hearken, you will hear from heaven, you will change things around. Oh Lord, we pray for the right attitude. Father, we pray for the right attitude. Humble each and every one of us. That as we have come to the altar Amen. and wherever we have found ourselves, yes. things will be altered in our lives. Amen. Our situation will change. Amen. We will live here rejoicing. Amen. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.